What does a giant snake, a bug that looks like Darth Vader, and a predator that looks like a living teddy bear have in common? Well, somehow, these animals all existed without being identified until now. I'm Mike with List25, and these are 25 strange new species scientists recently discovered. You remember those old anaconda movies? They were ridiculous, but kind of entertaining. Anyway, scientists actually found a new species of anaconda in 2024, a real one, and it might be the biggest snake on Earth. They spotted it in the Ecuadorian Amazon, though people living there already knew about it. One they measured was over 20 feet long. Some say they've seen even larger. Genetically, it's different enough from the regular green anaconda to count as its own species, about 5.5% different, which is more than the difference between us and chimps. These things are fast, strong, and keep animals like rodents, deer, and even caimans from taking over. Thing is, the area they live in is being destroyed. Logging, oil leaks, illegal building. So scientists just named this species, and now it's already in danger. Now meet Bathonomus videri, a giant sea bug that was named after Darth Vader. And even I have to admit, the resemblance is uncanny. It was discovered in 2025, not through deep sea exploration, but after researchers bought seafood at a Vietnamese market and realized one of the bugs was a whole new species. It's kind of a super giant isopod, basically an armored sea roach that can grow up to the size of a loaf of bread. This one maxes out at nearly 13 inches long and weighs over two pounds. It's only ever been found near the Spratly Islands in the South China Sea, but thanks to growing demand for isopods as a luxury dish, these real-life villains are now being hauled up fast. So yes, Darth Vader lives, and apparently he tastes like lobster. But if we're handing out pop culture names, Australia wasn't about to miss its shot. In 2023, scientists came across a new orb weaver spider with a shiny black body and spooky markings that reminded them of Venom. Yeah, the Marvel one. So they named it Venomius Tom Hardyi, after Tom Hardy. It spins its web at night, tears it down by morning, and hides out in a custom-built silk retreat deep in Tasmania's coastal forests. It's closely related to leaf-rolling spiders, but different enough to earn its own genus. And fun fact, museum collections already had specimens sitting around. They were just unlabeled for years. Spider fans will probably love it, but for everyone else, this is definitely the kind of discovery that makes you shake out your shoes twice. Now let's look at something cuter. This animal right here is the Carnarvon Flapjack Octopus, a tiny, squishy, deep-sea creature that looks a little bit like Dumbo in a pancake costume. Or something like that. It was found off the coast of Western Australia during a 2022 research expedition and officially named in 2025. And while it won't ever get bigger than an inch and a half long, it lives thousands of feet below the surface, in water that's pressurized enough to crush most things that look that adorable. Meanwhile, scientists have also missed an entire owl on an island that's only 50 square miles wide. The Principe Scops owl was only described in 2022, even though it lives in the forests of Principe Island off the coast of West Africa and isn't exactly hiding away. It's tiny, and it makes a short insect-like call that sounds more like a chirping frog than a bird. Once you hear it, though, it's unmistakable. You won't miss it. It's only found on the island south, and the population is estimated at just 1,000 to 1,500 individuals. The good news is that they're already living in a part of the park that's protected. The bad news? Well, they're still small, vulnerable, and facing all the usual suspects. Back on land, and much closer to home, a small spotted skunk just reappeared in southern Texas after being off the world's radar for more than 60 years. About the size of a house cat, the plains spotted skunk has bold white stripes and spots, and when it's threatened, it goes full Cirque du Skunk, handstand in the air, butt pointed straight at you. It's very cute for about three seconds. After that, well, let's just say it's all sulfur and regrets. It was rediscovered in 2024, caught on camera traps set up in a patch of overgrown ranch land. Not exactly prime real estate for an endangered animal, but it's hanging in there. Then again, sometimes nature leaves you wondering, is it cute or is it cursed? Hipposideris kingstonae is a round leaf bat named after conservationist Tiga Kingston. 
It was identified in 2023 and lives in parts of Southeast Asia. It starts off looking harmless enough. Soft fur, big eyes, small body, all the stuff that usually makes people go, aww. And then it turns around. Right there on its face is a massive nose leaf shaped like a squashed horseshoe. Great for echolocation, but it sort of looks like it's got a built-in fanny pack on its face. <laughs> it's definitely not cute in the traditional sense, but hey, it's got charm and that's worth something. Speaking of odd looking charmers, the Southern Maine Sloth was officially confirmed as its own species in 2020. This slow moving fluff ball lives in Brazil's Atlantic forest and has the face of, well, a coconut. Locals literally call it that. It's got thick fur that hosts algae and insects, a flatter skull than its northern cousin, and a permanent expression that screams, go on without me. Its entire personality screams sleepy, moss-covered grandpa. It's now considered genetically distinct, which means its habitat is even more limited and more at risk. But it's probably napping through all of this, as it should. Elsewhere, in a jungle not too far away, someone found a snake that looks like it was designed by an art director and named it Sibin Ermelinde Caprioe, in honor of Leonardo DiCaprio's mother. Really. It lives in the jungle of eastern Panama, is long and slender, striped in cream and dark brown, and has beautiful bright orange eyes. Its favorite food? Snails. And it's so docile that when it feels threatened, it doesn't strike, it just coils up and releases a bad smell like a tiny, elegant stink bomb. Of course, no good discovery goes unthreatened. Just as researchers were naming it after DiCaprio's mom, mining companies were carving up the forest it calls home. Awesome. Rats are already some of the most beautiful little fish out there, and the Cirhalabris finifenma, named in 2022, might be the most eye-catching of them all. Finifenma means rose in Devehi, which is fitting because this beauty is bright pink, soft-finned, and glides like it's in slow motion. It lives in the mesophotic zone, that middle stretch of the ocean that's too deep for regular scuba and too shallow for submarines. Strangely, this fish was already being caught and sold in the aquarium trade before it even had a name. So it was a collectible before anyone realized it was brand new. On a completely different note, not every species gets discovered by science. Sometimes it's a YouTuber with a camera. Not too long ago, Joe Cho Sipawat, a wildlife creator with millions of followers, saw a strange black and white tarantula near his home in Thailand. And instead of screaming or stepping back like a regular person, he took a photo and sent it to an arachnologist. That kicked off a full field study, which confirmed the spider wasn't just new, it was unique enough to earn its own genus. Named Toxinus bambus, it is the first tarantula known to live exclusively inside bamboo stalks. Now they can't drill in themselves, so they move into tiny hollows left by beetles or bees, lining the space with silk to make a snug little tunnel. And since no one's ever seen them in any other plant, researchers now consider it one of the rarest tarantulas in Thailand. I should also mention how eight tiny geckos just got added to Madagascar's already packed reptile roster. These new species all belong to the Ligodactylus genus, specifically the Domerguela subgenus. And while they might look identical at first glance, genetic testing proved each one is distinct. They've been living side by side without interbreeding which is rare anywhere, but especially in Madagascar, where unusual biodiversity is kind of the norm. The theory is that their small size limits how far they can travel, so even a river or patch of dry land can split one population into several over time. Not to be outdone, something that looked like fuzz-covered droppings in the forests of Queensland, Australia, turned out to be the world's hairiest beetle. Entomologist James Tweed spotted it in 2024 while camping and realized the little red and black bug, barely half an inch long, wasn't just covered in hair, it was drowning in it. The fluff is especially thick around its upper body, giving it the appearance of something moldy or diseased, which might actually be the point. Scientists think the hair could be a defense mechanism, tricking predators into thinking it's infected with fungus. It's officially known as Ex Castra albopilosa, meaning white and hairy from the camp, and has only ever been seen once, meaning it's either incredibly rare or very good at hiding. The previous year, we also discovered the world's most beautiful frog in Madagascar. And no, that is not my personal opinion, but the opinion of the scientist who named it Guibamantis pulcherimus, 
Latin for most beautiful. It was caught hopping through the Marojeji rainforest by a research team led by herpetologist Mark Schurz, who noticed it looked just different enough from its close relative, G. Pulcher, to warrant a closer look. He was right. The new species is a bright green, small-bodied tree frog that presumably lives on screw pines and lays its eggs in water pulled high up in bromeliads, a tropical plants that actually makes the perfect home for something so delicate and secretive. Like many of Madagascar's frogs, it's still mostly a mystery. But between its vivid color, canopy high lifestyle, and award-winning looks, it's safe to say it is well on its way to becoming rainforest royalty. All right, our next frog is not so glamorous, but just as memorable mostly because of its name. Hyloscirtus Seth McFarlane is a newly discovered tree frog from the remote mountain ridges of eastern Ecuador. And yes, it's named after Family Guy creator Seth McFarlane. The frog lives on just a few hectares near the Cerro Mayordomo summit. It took researchers four years of rugged fieldwork to collect enough specimens to confirm it was a new species. The males are black with bright yellow markings, while the lone female scientists found had red spots instead and both are probably toxic. Rangers who handled them reported tingling, itching, and pain that lasted for hours. A very different story played out in northern India, where a new gecko species stayed hidden simply by copying the camouflage of its cousins. Oh, and it probably helped that it could fly. Gecko Mysoramensis, also known as the Mizoram Parachute Gecko, glides between trees using flaps of skin and webbed feet, steering through the air like a tiny living hang glider. One specimen was actually collected over 20 years ago, but no one realized it was a new species until researchers took a closer look at its size, color, and DNA. It's just one of 14 known geckos with this gliding ability, and it's only found in the tropical forest near India's border with Bangladesh and Myanmar. And since tiny and endangered seems to be the theme, here's a frog that checks both boxes, but with attitude. Greta Thunberg's rain frog, also known as Pristamantis Greta Thunberg, was discovered on a remote mountaintop in Panama called Cerro Chucanti. It's tiny, has jet black eyes, and comes just across like it really wants to say, how dare you? The team that found it had to hike through thick cloud forest, past crashed helicopters and muddy trails, just to reach its habitat. And the reason it was named after Greta? Someone actually bought the naming rights in a conservation auction as a way to honor her work on climate change. Back to geckos. In 2023, scientists came across a very pregnant gecko clinging to a tree in Uganda. They were in the Karamoja region, surveying the mid-elevation woodlands, when they noticed a few small lizards perched on tree trunks. One look turned into a closer inspection, and that's when they realized this wasn't a known species. The new gecko, Ligodactylus caramoja has a slender body, chevron markings on its throat, and a belly that fades into shades of yellow. It's considered large for a dwarf gecko, topping out at about 3 inches, but it still manages to stay almost invisible. They're active during the day, stick to tree trunks, and blend in so well it took seven of them on one tree trunk before anyone realized they were looking at something new. Things got a little weirder in Vietnam, where scientists came across what might be the world's most cuddly vampire. It's called Hylomus macaron, a newly described species of Jimnyar, which is basically a fuzzy, fangy cousin of the hedgehog. But it's not actually a hedgehog, it's a moon rat. Not as spiky as its relatives, but armed with some serious teeth, which earned it the nickname Vampire Hedgehog. The name macaron even comes from the Vietnamese word for vampire. It was one of 234 new species discovered in Southeast Asia's Greater Mekong Region in 2023, so that part of the world is definitely still full of surprises. One of them? A squid the size of your pinky nail that hunts shrimp like it's practicing jujitsu. Kodama jujitsu was found clinging to coral by underwater photographer Brandon Ryan Hannon, and it's so unique it now has its own genus, Kodama, named after ghostly tree spirits from Japanese folklore. These tiny squids live in the waters around Japan's Ryukyu Islands, and while some glide smoothly, this one moves with its arms spread wide, ready to grab shrimp, even if it's bigger than itself. That grappling style is exactly what earned it the name Jujitsu. Scientists say that they're hard to find, not just because they're tiny, but because they only show up in winter. Where they go the rest of the year? Still a mystery. The real surprise, though, came from Antarctica, inside a museum jar, no less. While examining archived larvae samples, researchers at the Virginia Institute of Marine Science noticed something off about a few fish. 
They had shorter snouts, longer bodies, and two dark vertical bands across their sides. Small details, but enough to raise eyebrows. Genetic testing confirmed it. This was a brand new species of dragonfish. They named it Acarotaxis gouldae, or the banded dragonfish, and it's only been observed off the Western Antarctic Peninsula, the same area targeted by the krill fishing industry, which isn't great, especially since the fish produces very few offspring and is already vulnerable to environmental shifts. Somewhere a lot warmer, researchers were busy tracking down a frog by following a beeping sound coming from underground. Locals in Peru had long known about it. They called it Ranadanta, or tapir frog, thanks to its long snout that looks a bit like the Amazonian mammal. But scientists had never officially documented it until recently, when a group led by local guides found it burrowed deep in Amazon peatland. It's tiny, brown, and fast. And while it's almost impossible to spot, it won't shut up. Its call is a steady beep, beep, beep that helped researchers zero in on its location and eventually dig it out by hand. They named it Synapterus danta, and based on its body shape, it might be specially adapted to that soft, peaty soil. Okay, remember our moon rat at number seven? Well, he was discovered with a friend, or rather, two distant cousins, both hiding out in the mountains of Mindanao in the Philippines. Just a few weeks into 2023, researchers announced Protogymnura intermedia and P. minima, two new species of gymnures. P. intermedia turned up in the highlands of Mount Hamiguitan, rocking golden brown fur and a shrew-like snout. P. minima, as the name suggests, is the tiniest member of the bunch. Scientists say nearly every peak they've explored in Mindanao has its own set of species found nowhere else on Earth. So if this is your kind of thing, keep an eye out for all the new discoveries. You know a species is pulling its weight in the cuteness department when it doesn't even have an official name and still makes it to number two on a list like this. The Alto Mayo Dwarf Squirrel, about the size of your palm, can be found in the cloud forests of northern Peru. Scientists captured it in 2024 only because they were tipped off by indigenous guides who already knew it was there. It's not just a new species, it's probably getting its own genus. And considering it lives in a part of Peru already packed with rare finds, this might just be the start of something way bigger. And finally, a discovery that's a bit older than the rest, but we put it on this list for a reason. Basarichion neblino, or the Olinguido, was first seen in Ecuador in 2006, but it took seven years of genetic testing to prove that it wasn't just a smaller Olingo. It took a bit of time, but it's now officially recognized as the first new carnivorous mammal discovered in the Western Hemisphere in more than 30 years. In short, this cutie belongs to the raccoon family, prefers living up in the canopy, and mostly eats fruit, but it still qualifies as a predator. Think figs, insects, and maybe the occasional bird egg. So here it is, people. The softest little killer you've ever seen. And maybe the most lovable addition to the list. And that is all I have for you today. But before you go, wait. Let's see if you were paying attention. Which of today's new species were named after a famous actor's mom? Was it A, Holomus Macaro, B, Acarotaxis Gouldae, C, Venomius Tom Hardii, or D, Sibin Irmelinda Caprioe? Drop your answers in the comments below, and no cheating! And if you haven't had your fill, check out our related video, 25 Facts That Only The Most Knowledgeable People Know. In that one, I covered everything from Charles Manson selling a song to the Beach Boys to the fact that the guillotine was still in use when Star Wars hit theaters. Interested? Just click this link here. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that bell, subscribe, and I'll catch you again next time. I'm off to d discover an animal and name it.